of motivation. People often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. Lacking motivation is usually a sign that you don't have a compelling vision to pursue. People who have an exciting vision seldom lack motivation. While they may experience setbacks along the way and feel frustrated or even mildly depressed, they tend to bounce back quickly by reminding themselves of their vision. Lack of motivation is also a sign you're not following your bliss. It shows there is a misalignment between what you do and who you are. The word enthusiastic comes from Greek and means filled with the divine. If you lack enthusiasm, you're probably out of touch with the essence of who you are. I've never heard of a Nobel Prize winner retiring early because he or she was bored. In fact, most of them will work until the day they die. This is because they have a clear purpose. Similarly, I've never seen billionaires selling their companies to retire on a tropical island. They may have tried, but quickly realize how boring their lives have become. The point is, you don't inherently lack motivation, you're just not doing what you're supposed to do. You haven't stretched yourself enough and haven't created a vision that inspires you. Perhaps you're stuck at the same dead-end job that bores you to tears. Or maybe you're at your current job for the money or to fulfill your parents' wishes. Then, it's no wonder you lack motivation. Fortunately, you can get your motivation back. How to use motivation, or lack thereof, to grow. A lack of motivation says you need to design a life that is more in line with who you are. It entails having a deep knowledge of your strengths, personality, and preferences, while making sure you leverage them on a day-to-day -day basis. Knowing your strengths. When you spend most of your day doing things you suck at, how do you feel? Probably not very motivated. Sadly, many people are stuck in jobs that do not allow them to use their strengths. As a result, they keep struggling and keep wondering if their fate is to suffer the same way for the next 40 years. I've experienced firsthand the difference between working at a job you suck at and working on something you love and feel good at. I can attest that the level of motivation and energy you have when you do what feels right to you can be extraordinary. Have you noticed you tend to like the things you're good at? You may not necessarily enjoy the task in itself, but receiving positive feedback gives you a sense of pride and make you feel good about yourself. Now, if you were constantly reminded what a poor job you're doing, would you still love that same task? The point is, there are things you are good at, as well as things you enjoy doing. Once you identify the tasks you're good at and spend as much time as you can on them, you'll feel more motivated. You may even find yourself enjoying tasks you would never have imagined simply because you're good at them. To be able to focus on your strengths, you may have to redesign your current job description, change jobs within the same company, or change your career altogether. Remember, if every second of the day is a struggle, you're probably not doing what you're supposed to do. You have strengths, and your job is to find them. Knowing your personality. This is somewhat related to the previous point. Since your personality partially determines what you're good at. For instance, if you're an introvert, you're likely to take different career choices than if you were an extrovert. You may prefer spending most of your time alone or in small groups and may stay away from jobs that require you to interact with clients all day long. You may find yourself performing better in a quiet environment. Your core values will also affect your level of motivation. Perhaps independence is vital for you. If so, being self-employed might be a better idea than having a 9-to-5 job. Or maybe you like novelty and want to be learning constantly. If so, Doing the same repetitive job might not bring you much satisfaction. Knowing what motivates you. Sometimes you lack motivation because you set a goal in a way that doesn't inspire you. While the goal may be something you genuinely want, the way you frame it or work on it is just not motivating you. Let's say you want to lose weight. If none of the reasons behind your goal touch you at an emotional level, you won't feel motivated and will have a hard time achieving your goal. Thus. Your job is to find out what losing weight will do for you. Ask yourself why you want to lose weight. Keep asking yourself why until you find something that resonates with you at an emotional level. Remember, you seldom want to lose weight because it's the right thing to do. 
You want to lose weight because it will make you feel a certain way. This is the meaning you give to losing weight, and you must get it right if you want to succeed. Now, you can also ask yourself why you don't want to lose weight. It may help you uncover the reasons why you're struggling. Losing weight. If you overeat because it makes you feel good, you need to ask why is that? Is it a habit? Is it because you're stressed? Is it because of your environment? Is it a way to escape from something? Knowing why you're doing something is important. Once you have a strong why, who knows what you can accomplish? Motivation comes and goes. Here, it is worth mentioning. You don't need to be motivated all the time. Motivation comes and goes. There is no need to beat yourself up when you feel uninspired. To help you take action when you lack motivation, it is important to have a system that allows you to stay on track with your goals, build the self-discipline needed to do things when you don't feel like it, and have self-compassion and love yourself instead of blaming yourself for everything that goes wrong in your life. Putting a system in place means having a daily routine that allows you to move toward your goal. For instance, it could be working on a task for a certain amount of time first thing in the morning. Sticking to that ritual every day is one way to build self-discipline. Another way is to set small goals every day and achieve them consistently. Having self-compassion means encouraging yourself instead of beating yourself up. To learn more about how to create a morning ritual, you can refer to my book, Wake Up Call, How to Take Control of Your Morning and Transform Your Life. Feeling Stuck Sometimes you feel stuck. You're not motivated to do anything, or you feel overwhelmed and don't necessarily know why. This often results from either having too many open loops in your life or from procrastinating on a major task. Let's see what you can do to unstick yourself. A simple three-step process to unstuck yourself. Whenever you feel stuck, try the following three-step process. 1. Make a list of all the tasks that need to be done. 2. Identify one task you've been putting off. 3. Complete that task. There is often one specific task you've been putting off for a while. While this may not necessarily be a difficult task, once you commit and finally complete it, you feel so good you may end up completing many more tasks. As a result, you will start building momentum and allow yourself to get unstuck. If you cannot work on that one specific task, start with a less daunting one. This will also help you build momentum. Closing Open Loops if you've been putting off too many tasks, or have too many unfinished projects, you can do the following. 1. Make a list of all the tasks or project you want to complete. 2. Set aside a specific time to complete them. Perhaps, just a few hours, could allow you to finish many of these tasks. Or maybe you need longer. If so, take more time. 3. For bigger projects, in the next few days or weeks, focus on only one project until it is complete. 4. Reschedule, delegate, or abandon some of your projects. 